What is up guys, Fahir here from awesometoots.com. In this short video, I want to address how can we sort our sprites? And what does that mean? Well, if we have multiple sprites in our game, which in most games we have, how can we sort them or their rendering order? If we take a look at our character Tommy right here, we see that his arm is rendered in front of his body, his right arm, his left arm behind the body, his leg is rendered in front of his body. If I go into the game tab, this is what we will see when we run the game. This is our character deformed, how he looks like. We don't want it like this. Now, before we actually go and see how we can, well, sort all of these body parts, first of all, take a look at each individual body part. So we have the head, which is on its own. We have the body, which is on its own. We have the arms as well and the legs. They are all on its or on their own. Now, if I go here into the scene and right below the scene tab, you have this 2D, which is checked currently. If I click on it, it will be unchecked and we will go into the 3D view. If you take a look at the 3D view, you will see that the right leg is way in front of the body and that the right arm is way in front of the body. The left arm is back, so it's well back in terms of the body or in respect to the body's position. And if I go here, the right leg or actually the left leg as well, you see also the body and the head. You see the head is right or actually this is the body. So if I select the body, which is right here, the head is right here. You see, here is the head like this. So how can we change this rendering order? Well, there are three ways that we can do. The first way is that we can change the Z position. So if I take the head or actually the head is rendered collect correctly, but if I take the arm and if I play with the Z position, you see a little bit, I've just changed the Z position to positive 2.27 it's rendered behind. If I take the left arm and change it, so change the Z position a little bit backwards, so negative 0 0.19, it's rendered, well, on top of the body. If I take the leg, which is the right leg, and let's see, we need to change it at 0 0.60 or 0 0.64. And also the shoes of the body or actually of the legs, they are not rendered correctly. So if I change them like this, so now they are rendered in front of our legs, same as for the other shoe. So this is how we can change the rendering order. This is one of the ways. And if I go back here, you will see how all of these sprites are displaced. You see this uh, left shoe is in front of the body and in front of the left leg, the right shoe as well. You can see that right here into the scene view when you click on this or uncheck this 2D view to go inside of the 3D view. So this is one of the ways how you can change that. And the camera sees what's first. So the camera sees what's first and you take a look at here, this shoe is first, then the second shoe is second, then we have the body, then we have the head, then we have the arm here. So this is how they will get rendered. But I'm gonna select all of them, I'm gonna put it back zero for the Z position. And when they are all at the zero position, the camera will render, I don't know based on what, but you see, if I select all of them, their Z position is set to zero. So they are all in one line, but still some body parts are rendered on top of other. Why is it like this? I don't know. I don't know how camera works behind the scenes and the code implemented in the camera, but it can happen that two game objects are on the same Z position, but one is rendered on top of the other. So how are the other ways that we can change this? Well, other ways is using sorting layers right here inside of the sprite render component. So you see, if I select all of these game objects, head, body, arms, legs, and shoes, they are on the default sorting layer. So how can we use these sorting layers to determine the rendering order? Well, if I take the body, it needs to be rendered on top of the right arm. The sorting layer is currently default for the body and for the right arm, it's well set at default as well. If I put the body, if I select the body and put it on the road, bam, it is rendered on top of the right arm, but it is also rendered on top of the head and the left arm. So if I take the head and if I set the head on the wall, it is rendered on top of the body. If I take the left arm and set it on the wall as well, it will be rendered on top of the body. And for our shoes, 
I'm also going to put them on the wall and they are rendered on top of the leg. So what is going on? Well, first of all, we need to understand the order of these sorting layers. So the first sorting layer in this list will be rendered last by the camera. So the default will be rendered last. The road will be rendered second. The wall will be rendered third, so on and so forth. Move fourth, player fifth, FX sixth, and UI seventh. What does this mean? Well, it means the sprite that has a higher value of these layers. So for example, if our body is set on UI, which is the highest, it will be rendered on top of all other sorting layers. So UI or the element or the sprite that's at the UI sorting layer will be rendered on top of the FX layer, player layer, move layer. This basically means I'm going to select all of them and I am going to put them back on default. But let's pretend that the body is set on the UI, which means it's the highest. And if I go here and select the body, that means the body will be like this. So it's set on the highest sorting layer, which means it will be rendered first. So again, those on the default will be rendered last. The next one on the road, they will be rendered second, then the wall, so on and so forth. So you can, for example, put the body. And if I go back and select the body and put it on Z zero, go back in the game, you can put the body on the road, which will be rendered. It will make it render on top of the right arm. And you can put the head on sorting layer wall, which will make it render on top of the road layer. And our body is on the road layer. And if I select the right or actually the left arm and put it on the road as well, it will be rendered on top of the body. But in this case, the body and the left arm are also on the road. So what you can do is set the left arm on the wall, which is higher in hierarchy. So wall layer will be rendered on top of the road, which is better than to put them on the same layer. In this case, there is another case where we can put them on the same layer and we will see that in a second. So again, this is how we can use these layers to determine which one will be rendered first. Same as with the Z axis, the layer with the higher value right here. So going from top to bottom, the bottom being the higher value, the higher the layer, it will be rendered first. So again, if I take the body and put it on the UI, sorting layer, it will be rendered on top of all other layers. So it will be rendered on top of FX, player, move, wall, so on and so forth. It will be rendered on top of all other layers. Now I'm going to select them all and put them on the player layer. So they are all selected and they are on the one layer. You see here, shoe, legs, everybody, they are on the same layer. So how can we determine which one will be rendered on top of another in this case? Well, in this case, we have something called order in layer, which means the order in the layer where they are in. So currently all of our body parts on the play are on the player layer. So if we want, for example, the right arm to be rendered behind the body, we need to set it at negative zero because the body is set at one. We can set the head at one as well. Actually, the body is set at zero, excuse me, which means the right arm needs to be negative one to be rendered behind the value zero. The left arm can be at one. The legs also need to be negative one. And this one also needs to be negative one. But the shoes can be zero or one, but we can leave it at zero because the legs are at negative one. The point in this particular technique here is that the order in layer, if it's higher, then the game object will be rendered on top of the one with the lower value. So in our case, the body has a value of zero, but the right arm has a value of negative one. So zero is greater than negative one, which means zero will be rendered on top of negative one. If we go here in the scene, they're on the same Z axis. The Z axis does not change in the case of layers and in order in layer. 
the z-axis only changes if we actually move the z-axis. So it only changes in that case. So if, you, if we go back here, we see that the body is at order in layer zero, but the z-axis of the body is also at zero because we did not change it. When we are messing around with sorting layers and order in layer, the z-axis does not change. You need to actually change the z-axis in order to, well, manipulate the z-axis. And if you're asking me, does changing z-axis affect the sorting layers and order in layer? Well, it does affect. If I take the body, even though it's at order in layer zero and the arm is negative one, if I change the z value that high, it will change how it is rendered. So don't touch the z-axis when you are using sorting layers and order in layer. Now going back, to our explanation of order in layer. Again, the one with the higher value will be rendered on top of the one with the lower value. So in our case, we have our right arm, which has a negative one value and the body is at zero. Zero is greater than negative one. So if I take the body and actually set it at one, I need to take the head and set it at two because again, there is a chance if both are on the same sorting layer and same order in layer that the sprite you want to be rendered on top will be rendered behind. So it can happen if we put the body and the head at one, that the head will be rendered behind the body. So it's a good idea to put it at the higher values in our case too. The right arm is at negative one, body is set at one, which means it will be rendered on top of the right arm. Head is set at two, which means it will be rendered on top of the body, which is one. And even if the head overlaps the arm, it will be rendered on top of the arm because the arm is negative one and head is two. So again, the higher value in order in layer means it will be rendered on top of the sprite that has a lower value. Same with sorting layers. The layer on the higher value in terms of going from up to down, down mean being the higher value will be rendered on the layer that has a lower value. So again, UI will be rendered on top of FX, player, so on and so forth. And this works for UI elements as well. So here we have our canvas. Let me just find the UI canvas and here it is. I set the sorting layer of the canvas to UI. And if I take my character, so if I take the Tommy and let's try to move Tommy here and move him here. You see, he is rendered behind the UI because Tommy, all of the body parts of our Tommy, if you select him, are on the sorting layer player. And UI, if you select the canvas and you have this option only on the canvas, you don't have it on each individual game object here. So for example, the button, you cannot set it to be rendered on another sorting layer. You need to select its canvas and then change this right here in the canvas. So sorting layer is UI. If I change the sorting layer to default, you see the player now is rendered on top of the UI elements. So another use for these sorting layers is with UI elements. You will put it usually on the highest sorting layer because this is how you want your UI elements to be rendered. They, you want UI elements to be rendered on top of all other game objects in the scene. So just keep that in mind that you can also use this to influence which UI elements are rendered or actually how the UI elements are rendered in your scene. So this was a short video, hopefully 10 minutes or a little bit longer, but this is something that I saw a lot of students have troubles with. They don't know how to set this up, how to make characters render on top of other characters, blah, blah, blah. Anyways, I've addressed this issue. So you have the complete tutorial right here. If you want free assets that you can practice with, you can download my free asset pack. Link is in the description below or just go on awesometoots.com and enter your info. You will receive free assets from me. 2.5 gigabytes I have so far. I will add more completely free to use, commercial free. You can use it for your own commercial games. And uh, yeah, Fahir here from awesometoots.com. Thank you for watching and I will see you guys in the next video.